Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Today's video is going to focus on maintaining your dark colored gel coat boat. And in this case, we've got a, I think it's a 2018 um, Ranger. It's a smaller one. And in this video, I'm using the Griot's Garage Orbital Polisher. A little one-handed action here with the Griot's Garage, I think it's a, probably a five and a half inch microfiber pad. Unfortunately, in 2020, right now, they've run out of those, so they're pretty hard to come by. Um, but lots of other companies are making microfiber pads with this machine. Again, I'm using a five and a half inch backing plate. Um, and I found that that's a good size. It gets in some tight areas and also still provides a decent surface area for working. You'll notice I'm kind of going just back and forth, nice straight lines. You don't need to use a circular motion when you've got an orbital or a rotary for that matter. I tend to encourage people to always use straight lines. The machine's spinning in a circle already, so you don't need to do that with your arms. It's better, more consistent if you can follow a pattern and just work straight lines overlapping as you go. In this case right here, I should have probably tied this boat up a little bit better. This was how it was tied when I got there. And I may have adjusted that line that I'm working under right now just so I can get to it. Um, but it's kind of floating away. So always get your boat secured properly. Give your spacing so you can get down if you're working along the dock like I am. Um, I've got a dock pad here as well. It's a lifesaver course all the good safety equipment here my gloves that got a hole in them from working too much <laughs> my hat for keeping the sun off my neck and my little wax bottle holder there keeping my wax nearby all right back to it so in this video I'm using McGuire's diamond cut mixed probably about a 30 percent to 70 percent Meguiar's flagship premium, which is their polymer sealant. I found this combination works really well when uh, maintaining fiberglass. It'll remove some light to moderate oxidation um, and also produce a really good finish. Um, you'll be able to get out basic minor blemishes, uh, minor oxidation, and again, provide a really good finish for you. Basically what I like to do is I like to start at one end of the work, start applying a small amount to the pad, work it starting in an open area, and then up to the edges. In this case, I started right on this edge for this next section. I didn't really apply that much product to the pad because it was already wet, so I'm just kind of doing a continuation deal. Um, but normally, like with a fresh start, I'll start right in the middle wide open area. That way I don't accidentally put excess product into any of the edges or rails near the buffer um, generally in these you know wide open hull areas not an issue when I buff the top side up there you'll notice that one inch strip or two inch strip of the white edge it's gonna be real hard to center that pad on that because it's about half the width of the pad so in that case, I would use a pad that I've already worked the product in and then just start buffing right away versus adding more product and trying to get it to only hit the area I'm trying to buff on that edge and not the rub rail below or other things nearby. Hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, um, just a nice, good, consistent multiple pass over each line and then overlapping and then reworking is okay if you kind of watch what you're doing you'll see um, it get clearer as you go but also you'll probably notice at this point there's kind of a haze still in everywhere where I've worked and that's because that's got to be wiped off later which I'll show a little bit of at the end of the video just for some pointers on um, ways that I've found it works a little bit better and then things to avoid doing that can cause a problem. So really not much to it. It's just a matter of uh, getting out there, working in the sun, being hot, 
uh, making sure you're hydrated, following good patterns, processes, not letting your cord get into the buffing area, not letting your cord get into the water, um, obviously not falling into the water, not dropping your buffer, not getting distracted by you know, things that are happening around you. I'm just really trying to practice some good, conscientious, safe work. That's really what it's about. <clears throat> You'll notice my dock pad's tiny here. It's basically just protecting my shoulder a little bit, not so much my uh, lower portion of my body. I do have longer dock pads too. This one happened to break down, so it's a little bit shorter. But hey, you got to use what you got. This is one of three types of buffers we use. We also use a long throw orbital polisher, um, which is a little bit more aggressive. If the surface becomes oxidized, that's kind of the next step up machine wise. And then of course, if it's real oxidized or heavily scratched or something, we would go all the way to a rotary polisher, which is a completely different machine rather than spinning in a random orbital pattern like this one does with the counterbalance the rotary just spins in a circle no orbiting um, no randomness the other difference between that machine and this one would be the other one is definitely way more risky to use um, very much easier to overheat and burn fiberglass as well as cause swirling or fine scratches that'll leave the hologram look that nobody likes. Um, this machine, real safe on the gel coat. It's doing the least amount of removing of the gel coat and the, the most consistent and um, really good polishing process to fiberglass to maintain it. And again, this will even take out some light to moderate oxidation um, but really, once you start getting moderate to heavy oxidation, it's just time to step up to a completely different machine, different type of pad, and everything. Um, let's talk about pads for a minute. I like these microfiber pads on gel coat. They work really well. But you can also use some foam pads. Typically, real dense foam pads will work okay on fiberglass. Um, there's open cell and closed cell. Closed cell tend to work a little bit better. Oh, I don't watch this boat, it's kind of getting away from me. Um, yeah, closed cell foam pads will work fairly well on fiberglass. Um, more open cell foam pads can work. Again, in gel coat that's in good condition, almost anything will work to apply wax. Um, some things just work better and depending on where it's at oxidation stage wise, um, will determine what pad is going to work best. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. I'm going to go ahead and stop talking now, um, but go ahead and watch or fast forward to the end where I'm showing some wipe off of the bow and uh, see what that process is like. I actually did a little bit of talking during the filming of this video in that portion, um, so I do talk about a little bit of best practices for towel method and wiping off, which you know, it's kind of common sense, but at the same time, everybody I've ever trained typically does it wrong. And they do some um, pretty basic things that if they just knew what to do better would help, you know, 50% at least in um, timing, not wasting towels, that kind of thing. So check that out. If you want to fast forward, go for it. Other than that. Thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. Hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. All right, guys, so now to the wipe off. Really the key points to this are use a squared off towel so that when you get down to the water line, if this boat was near the water line, when you do that bottom edge, you're able to control and know exactly where the bottom is so it doesn't drip down. You know, if you were doing something like this, right, there's no bottom edge. The other thing is when you're doing something like this, how many layers do you have there? One to who knows how many. Your fingers 
are going to press through those areas and I don't know if this is correct but the way I explained it is you're only getting pressure where your fingers actually are if you've got a multiple folded towel you've got the ability to put pressure on this whole area and get some good force to what you're trying to get off otherwise you're just missing a bunch of it It's really moving away. That was a puppy at first. <laughs> yeah, that right? And finally, this is a view of the other side of Dunnell, as well as the top side. The entire boat was done with that same machine and same process. Obviously, the top side is a little more tricky. Got to work in a lot tighter areas to do that. Um, and then there's also some hand areas that need to be done as well. Anything basically smaller than the pad width. You really got to come back by hand and hand apply to those areas. Um, but that's pretty straightforward. The key there with hand applying is just don't over apply and don't start in areas that are super tight when you begin your application. Otherwise, you just push product into places that it's hard to get out. Thanks again for watching. Hope you're doing great. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>